I would also like to introduce. I would also like to introduce in a very special way our National General Secretary, Ms. Kalpana David, who is uh, the wind beneath our wings, is our support system. Uh, she encourages us and um, just helps us in our strive to um, increase our outreach and to affect and to impact real change. I would also like to thank Ms. Dia Ann Matthew, who is the National Administration and Programs Officer. Uh, my colleagues, and lastly, extending a very warm welcome to our fellow YWCA volunteers and members. Over to you, um, Michelle. Thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, so we have in our midst Dr. Shakuntla David, our national president. Uh, Ma'am, we would like to have a few words from you. Um, good evening, everyone. Can you can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you can you see me? You yes, can't see me. Yes, you can. Oh. Okay. Can you can you see me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. 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 Um, first of all, to the young people in this group, wish you a very very happy and a blessed International Youth Day. You know, it would be strange for those of us who are sitting around and we have known uh, some of us for many, many ages. Once upon a time, we were young people. We may not seem like that, but we were young people. And I especially welcome my board members, uh, uh, Kamini and uh, Bava, Rina, Betty. I could see those and those who I can't see to everybody, a very, very good evening and a warm welcome to our young people. You know, I was wondering, what do I say um, at an international youth day that we are doing it virtually? Because this is actually a new reality for all of us, um, the, the virtual space. And yet, as I was looking at some of the statistics, I, um, and I came across some very stark statistics. 464 million are the young people in this country at this point of time. So you can imagine we are almost almost half, almost half, not quite so, but almost half. Uh, uh, you know that kind of power we have within us, and uh, out of that, sixty-four percentage is the working population, and the challenges that were uh, that we are faced in today's world when we talk about youth for sustainability. You know the challenges around that. The first, the, the first challenge that I see is during the COVID times. For, for those of you young people who are in colleges and universities, they being closed, um, not being able to reach to friends. Uh, yes, FaceTime is good, but there have been so many tragedies in people's home and not having that personal connect of fun, whether it is church, whether it's university, whether it's college, or working going to or going to office has created a, a, a certain another kind of dilemma and another kind of ways of work in our lives, and um, we are all trying to cope with that. We are all trying to cope with that, and I. We are all trying to cope with that. However, it's not easy. It's not easy. So, some of the challenges that we have and. Only the young people of our country can turn this around. We have tried and perhaps as an older generation, to some extent we have failed. And my, our apologies for failing you young people. Um, as Swami Vivekanand said, I have faith in my country and especially in the youth of my country. My hope is in you with immense amount of feeling and enthusiasm in your blood. And with that, we appeal as the YWCA board members, um, appeal to you young people to please use the power of influence that you have. And the power of influence that you have is the only power that will sustain us and take you and us in the next decade and years to come. Having said that, there are some very, very definite challenges that we are faced in today's world. Um, 
ending food poverty. Food, how, how do we end that? How do we end that? Today, we see the farmers' protest that's happening in Delhi. It's the longest protest in the, in the history of the world, I'm told, uh, at the, in the present, recent present times. Thank so so how, how, do we, yes. how do we reach out? Bye. What can the young people do? How can we sustain this? The job opportunities, the market is getting less and less and less. There may be um, the working class people, 64% of India in that age is a working class people. But do people really have those jobs? Are we able to sustain it for the young people? Especially in times of uh, the COVID. COVID-19 has brought about many, many challenges for us. And um, you need to look at it. You know, many, many comments that came uh, that came around the country when COVID last year started. The air is so fresh. We can breathe. The trees can breathe. The roads are clean. The roads are open. Yes, those are our realities. And perhaps development has not been in the right way. However, there is a flip side of it also. How do we continue to sustain development and our environment and the whole globe? Because today we do not live in isolated pockets in the world that happened many, many years ago. Today, global change is a very, very important and real reality of our lives. And I'm sure Vishnu will talk more about it. And how do we, how do we use the power of influence that you have? I was reminded of the Me Too movement. And uh, you know that happened across the country. Perhaps the YWC of India can start another movement on the lines of Me Too movement to say, how do we maintain sustainability? Whether it's for jobs, whether it's for food, whether it is protection of the environment, what do we do? What do we do? I urge you people to dream because dreams transform, transform into thoughts and thoughts into actions. As I say to all people and I have been a witness of that. Started my journey as a young person in the YWCA. Yes, some of you who are in the YWCA will today say that YWCA is not the same. If we have failed you in any way, I urge young people to come forward as and take the lead. Now in our system, it is time for elections to happen. Please volunteer, please push yourselves, come on board so that you have the power of influence. Don't shy away from responsibilities. We all came here 20, 30, 40 years ago. I joined the YWCA 40 years ago. And therefore, I urge you people to take the first step. YWC is a safe space and we need to avail of that safe space. It provided me a safe place and that's my motivation in spite of all the hardships to keep going on. So my message to you is that it is your duty to bring about change now. We brought it in our times. We hand over the baton to you to take it forward with all our support, with all our blessings. It is your turn now to stop corruption, to oh. bring about change in corruption. You have the political will, you have the political uh, energy, Please use that to influence power structures in our country and elsewhere. We, uh, we call upon our numbers. We are known as the young people, YWC of India. You know, young people, you know, young Christians. And our moment is open to everybody. But we will be happy to see more participation from young people. I'm glad that our national office, we have some interns, we have recruited few people from the world uh, on World Guide, World YWCA guidelines to be with us. And we hope that you people will be able to attract, make programs that are attractive. Please make the impact. Please make the impact. Please arise, awake and stop. Don't stop till you have reached your goal. With these words, welcome to the session. Thank you very much for coming, joining, and God be with you. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dia. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so 
thank you ma'am for your words for encouraging us you to actually take this forward and uh, we will try our best to put in what all we have um so now to the time we were looking forward to we were waiting uh, the entire day to listen to dr vishnu and uh, <clears throat> so uh, we would like to call uh, and uh, dr vishnu to take this forward and to tell us about his experiences about his learnings and how we as youth can uh, affect and impact the environment and how he has done what he is doing right now over to dr vishnu uh thanks michelle and and thanks aknutala ma'am for uh, giving those kind words uh although this day is about international youth day that does i i don't fall into that category so that's why i didn't know about this day so so that's the first thing uh i am i'm very new to giving like you know very formal talks uh in like big big sessions so like apologies if i if i if i don't uh address all of your questions uh so even though amanda you know she uh she introduced me oh by the way good evening to everyone you know this is why you know i just woke up so i am just a bit messed up uh so good evening everyone and thanks for joining this session uh, taking your time we have 77 participants that's a big number i guess uh so even though amanda she introduced me well uh, maybe i can give you like a bit more comprehensive uh, introduction about myself so i belong i am an indian i am a proud indian uh, i i come from kerala i was born in trivandrum i did my schooling in trivandrum uh, also my bachelor's so even though uh, i am a climatologist but my background is not in climatology or in geography i am a uh, i am an engineer by background like everyone normally so i did my bachelor's in in electronics and communication engineering uh, from university of kerala and i was you know just like everyone if nowadays what happens in india you know before you finish your degree you get placed in in some it company so i was placed uh, i was placed at tcs uh, tata consultancy services uh, right and, and it was in 2008 so that's like almost like 13 years ago before they threw me out i resigned so that was my first step towards you know uh, knowing that you know that that was not my life uh yeah somebody muted me okay anyways <laughs> uh then then i didn't know what else to do after resigning from dcs so i came back home so i had like two routes so either write my gate exam and join join mtech or uh you know go for like bank coaching either become a clerk or like a probationary officer so that those were my two routes that time i tried a lot it didn't work out nothing worked out and i think within a span of like 8 to 10 months i wrote close to like 71 exams uh, all throughout india i still have the hall tickets for all these exams uh, back in trivandrum so uh, so that was a very nice experience but not a fun experience uh, but still I, i was able to travel that that was the only uh, like you know take away message from that so i didn't get i didn't get through any of this uh, any of the exams but finally you know i don't know what happened so there was this uh, msc program in earth observation science by isro uh, in dehradun so i wrote that exam and i accidentally cleared that exam i didn't know what happened so the, the the subject was about remote sensing so uh, you know monitoring earth from space so that's that's in short so satellites uh, so, re, so satellites up in the space they capture images of earth features and you know you analyze them so that was the subject so my mom she didn't know I, even i didn't know what remote sensing was my mom she was asking me like 
are you planning to make like you know remote controls for TVs? You know that's what she thought about like you know remote sensing, right? Uh, yeah, but anyways, uh, so I joined I, I joined this institute uh, in Israel, and then my life completely changed. So within three months, I got a, a fellowship from the European Space Agency, and I left India towards the end of two thousand nine. And I went to Netherlands for my for completing my masters. So initially, my research was not about snow and sea ice. It was more towards uh, forestry from uh, in Sundarbans and also in the Amazon rainforest. Mm -hmm. So that was my first uh, field work. You know, traveling to the Amazon rainforest and also to the Sundarbans. But I guess uh, during my masters, I realized what my potential was, what my passion was, and then I realized that you know, I should I should make more advancements uh, in my academics and also for research, just not just for me, but also for like science and humanity. But then again, my faith changed. So I initially thought that I would end up as a forester, but that didn't happen. Uh, so I got placed uh, at the Alfred uh, Wegener Institute initially in Germany uh, as a polar researcher. So that's when I first traveled to the Antarctic to the South Pole uh, back in 2011. And then again, you know, my greediness for like achievements, you know, you know, it, it sort of, uh, you know, it sort of ate me up. And then I thought like, okay, I should, I should go to the North Pole also. So then I moved from Germany to Switzerland to ETH Zurich. From there, you know, I did my research on Siberian permafrost. So that's, that's how I, I moved to, to the Arctic. Uh, so after covering like both North and South Poles, then my ambition was to, 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 to have my mom stop telling me, you know, Vishnu, you should, you should study, right? So that's, that's why I did my PhD. So I moved to Canada, uh, for my PhD, uh, where I, so over the past eight, nine years, I have been, in, have been living in Canada where I did my PhD on Arctic sea ice, the ice which forms in the ocean. And, uh, yeah, thankfully, uh, I finished my PhD on time. Uh, I finished two of my postdoctoral fellowships. After that, now I am a research scientist uh, in Canada. So my so that's that's my CV in short. A bit more comprehensive, but a bit more short. So I don't have like pages and pages of like you know achievements in my CV, but this is like a brief. This is like a brief of what I have. So. Uh, uh, and when it comes to research, I work on uh, Arctic and the Antarctic sea ice. So just to give you like a very layman's perspective of what sea ice is. So in the uh, in in both the polar oceans, in the Arctic Ocean and in the Southern Ocean, when when winter sets in, then there is no sunlight. I'll show you some pictures right after this, just for you to get some perspective of what I'm doing. So when when the sun when the sun sets in the Arctic and the Antarctic. Uh, so during winters, there is no sun for the there is no sun for like six months. So it's completely dark for 24 hours. And so the air temperature drops and the ocean starts freezing. It's it's very difficult for us common people to 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 even you know think that you know ocean can freeze, but the ocean does freeze in the Arctic and the Antarctic. So it freezes and forms something called as sea ice, S-E-A-I-C-E. -E. So that's what I do research on. Now, why sea ice is important to the planet? So, so as you know, that white, white, you know, white material reflects a lot of sunlight back into the atmosphere. So, sea ice is like very much white. It's like an icy desert in the ocean. So, when there is when there is more sea ice, it, it reflects almost all the harmful radiations coming from the sun back into the atmosphere, keeping the Earth stabilized. Now, what's happening now, like over the past few decades, is the sea ice is melting. Uh, it's not freezing properly. It's melting very much early. So what happens is you have a lot of open ocean which absorbs all the sunlight, which means the polar oceans, they become like increasingly warmer. And when the polar oceans become increasingly warmer, our oceans like Indian Ocean, for example, uh, uh, the Arabian Sea, the Bay of Bengal, all these oceans, or not all these, all these sea, seas also, uh, water features also, they also become like increasingly warmer. 
so that means that you know we so over the years if you have noticed the monsoon timings have like considerably changed so you get these rainfalls at awkward times in in north india if you if you look at the cloud bursts cloud bursts in in himachal pradesh that's one of the reasons why those happen why that happens is because of the increased polar warming one another one another problem you know we face uh, are the increased cyclones it's because of the increased ocean temperature so if you go, if you take a thermometer and you know measure the arabian sea like 5 years ago you would have seen a number 28 degree celsius now if you go up to arabian sea today and then measure the temperature again it's 32 to 33 degree celsius so that's like a 5 degree increase over the past many years so when you have like more warming in the ocean it it intensifies the cyclones so that's why we have like a lot of cyclones uh, mass destruction uh, through coastal erosion uh, people get stranded you know it affects the it affects the mobility it affects it affects their livelihood right so uh, so that's the importance of that's the implication of uh, what the research what i am doing now maybe everybody must have read the, the recent ipcc report which came in like you know few few days ago and the report clearly specifies uh, like you know all these issues with climate change and and the reasons with that's affecting the planetary health which is like the theme of uh, this talk is almost induced by human induced anthropogenic activity so whatever we are doing it's affecting our planet and it's affecting our planetary health so uh, so sagunthala ma'am she she talked about you know how uh, our upcoming youth should you know make progress in this field especially in this field and also like you know uh, contribute to the uh, contribute to the improvement of our environment so i am talking from an environment perspective and 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 that should actually come from the youth through like you know grassroots level of education when it comes to like environmental studies uh and you know uh, you know managing the environment and also like you know uh, taking care of uh, taking care of uh, not just the people around you but also the ecosystem and also the uh, you know uh, uh, also the animals around you so that's how you sort of uh, make steps to uh, to help our environment Uh, i should also say that you know climate change is already happening it already happened uh, and we have crossed the tipping point uh, when it come when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, uh, problems such as like you know global sea level rise and all those uh, global sea level rise increased wildfires increased warming uh, those implications we cannot stop but at least we can reduce it you know through through our actions so that so that's that's my message in in general uh, i'm not a big subject expertise in in a lot of uh, earth system sciences but i can talk from a cryospheric point of view that is like snow and sea ice now uh, about what i do I mean, even though i talk a lot of i blab it a lot but you know uh, sometimes it's easier to to talk about my research just through pictures so i'll share some pictures uh, for you to see it's a lot of there are like a lot of pictures but i'll just scroll through it and i'll give you like a live commentary of uh, what we do not just what i do what we do so it's not just like you know me doing my research it's like a team work so uh, michelle can i share my screen now uh, dr vishnu you can I don't want to see my face. Uh, so, I was, uh, I was. You know, how do I, how do I minimize this? This way. Okay. Can you see my screen? yes we can yes we can and you have minimized it so i was i was luckily a part of uh, sorry 
yeah so i was i was luckily the only indian on board uh, uh, in this expedition mosaic and this happened in 2019 uh, it was a one year long expedition into the arctic so this was uh, this was sort of my longest uh, expedition and and this this ex- this mosaic expedition is like the largest and the longest expedition in polar history so i was uh, i was uh, fortunate to be a part of it so i'll just show you some pictures of my life in darkness so when i i was during this expedition when there was no sun for 6 months so why can't i yeah okay so i'll just show you some pictures so this is how you know my my life is you know so i i live in an environment like this so this is not darkness this is almost going to darkness but this is where i live so this is like the ocean which is like 4 kilometers deep and this ice is actually formed from this ocean so this ocean freezes to form this ice so this is called as sea ice okay now uh just to show you yeah so this is this this is uh, this is polar darkness in the arctic so it's it's dark for 24 hours 7 days a week and for like 6 months so uh, and we do we do uh, we do measurements on sea ice using these sensors which i am just showing here so for example i don't want to talk too much about science but what i do is what we do is like we deploy these massive sensors which this 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 sensor is like close to like 15 feet high so what it does is it transmits electromagnetic waves like signals into the ice and it measures the thickness of the ice so the the ice thickness is close to like 3 to 4 meters uh, but we want to actually like validate what we see from the satellites the radar satellites based on these in situ uh, these ground based uh, ground based sensors yeah so uh, this ship the, the ship where we are where we actually live this is this is anchored into the ice and we and this uh, uh, and you know we drift we drift with the ice uh, along, you know, around the arctic ocean and you know so uh, yeah so so what we do daily is you know we come out from the ship and then come to these instruments and then we when we when we then we conduct uh, measurements so this is this is what we do in general i'm trying to explain it in a very simple way because so that you know you guys don't sleep yeah just to show some pictures uh, what i took uh, when i was on board yeah so even though you know all these i mean this this photo looks like very stable but we also get like in you know, a very warm uh, winter storms up to like 90 km per hour and when it goes up to like 90 km per hour the air temperature drops like down to like minus 70 minus 80 so that's that's how we live i can just show you an example of how it looks like so yeah so that's that's sort of how we how we live in this hostile environment yeah so uh, and and right after the storm you know we get these you know funny features like the the cracks in between the ice so this is actually the ocean so at some point you know this crack uh, widened up and we were not able to cross from here to there so uh, those those are like some of the challenges you know we face you know when we do expeditions and you know and and because of these wind and this flooding effects our instruments got to like flooded into the into the ice which means the ocean from this crack sort of like seeped through the ice which flooded the so which flooded the instrument so we had to like you know uh, like uh, retreat like evacuate the instrument or else you know it would just it would just break through this and you know go down and drown in the ocean so uh, fun times 
the environment looks like very much alienish so if i show this picture to like a like a to an audience and ask them to guess where this is they would say it's mars or like it's the stuff of the moon so uh, that's 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 how that's the environment you know we 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 live in and you know we we have these friends uh, beautiful polar bears i i say beautiful because they look good they 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 seem nice but they are not nice because this is what they do so they come into our uh, research station like on the ice and they start eating the cables which means we won't get power and our, our instruments they don't it, it stops working so this is so what we do is you know we 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 do fireworks up into the air to scare off uh, the polar bears so that's what uh, we do but uh, polar bears are all, you know sometimes you know they they show their authority uh, and this is and this is what they do when they want to show the authority so the flags what we poked in into the ice they stand there uh, hold on to it and they 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 show that you know they they rule the nature not us uh we also see uh so we also see like you know beautiful northern lights uh and i shouldn't boast about this but i got bored of seeing this i used to see it like every night but it's it's beautiful yeah this is uh, how the ice looks like when it starts freezing up so now uh, i mean technically we call this as pancake ice but we can call this uh, in in indian terms as like dosha ice it looks like dosha because of the wind uh, it 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 rotates the ice and makes this dosha like structure and dosha ice is not a technical term i just made it uh inside inside the ship you know we have we do we do have some fun times together uh, so an example of like what, how we play cards you know we also make enemies you know after playing games uh, but we have to do something to get rid of uh, our you know environmental challenges in darkness yeah so an example of uh, an example of how the uh, how the ship is like you know docked into the ice and it stayed it stays there like for like many months sometimes when the ship runs out of fuel and food we get another ship coming into the uh, into the ice they park next to the ice how we park cars and then they do this mid ice refueling so so this is a russian ship with 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 or close to like 3000 tons of fuel and and refueling this german uh, ice breaker few examples of what we do on the ice uh, yeah so uh, and this guy he's not like simply standing there he's actually a polar bear guard like looking around for polar bears so that you know he can protect us from polar bears so it's 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 a risky environment yeah just an example of the latitude and longitude so 88 degree north is close to like 150 kilometers uh, from the north pole so if you take a globe and then put this la la latitude and longitude it will be like the top of the planet yeah we also you know to to relieve ourselves of ourselves of like you know really bad cold you know we also do like you know like you know crazy stuff like bonfire and people can ask me people would ask me like okay when you're doing this bonfire you're releasing emissions into the atmosphere yes we are but sometimes i guess you know people become like very much selfish so uh, for themselves you know uh, just yeah this was our research group uh, last time when we when we were on board uh, the whole research team we also even though we live in the ship what we do is you know we we also do like occasional hikes in the darkness and you know we camp on the ice so when i say ice this is actually the ocean so the ocean is just underneath uh, so we camp on the ice just to get some you know time out of work and when the instruments you know they go down into the drains so what we do is you know we put like crosses just to just to you know as a as a souvenir as a memoir praying for them so we lost like three instruments close to you know in us dollar terms close to like a million dollars because uh, the ice broke up and it just fell through so we 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 go through all those uh, 
challenges. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, after darkness, and when we have this twilight, when the sun comes up back in the Arctic. Yeah, it's it's a picturesque landscape. It it looks beautiful, but it's cold. It's it's really cold. Yeah, and we were in this ship for like six months, and to pick us up, another ship came in. Uh, from Russia, so this this happened right in the middle of COVID. So we were the only people in the whole planet who were like isolated from COVID, and you know planning to go back home. So they came to pick us up from the ship. Yeah, uh, when when it became when the sun when the sun came out. Uh, this is our sea ice team who does remote sensing. So this is me, and she is my prof, Julian Struve. Uh, from University College London, and this is our beautiful team. The best thing with field work is you make the best friends in your life. You can't hide your true emotions when you do like hard field work. So we are a good team. Yeah. So we also go through like you know multiple challenges. So so we were we were coming back into like you know. Like human civilization in this ship, but we had only like twenty percent fuel remaining. So what Germans and Russians what they did was they sent another ship from Russia to to do a mid ice refueling. So so this is Admiral Makarov, uh, this is uh, Dranitsyn, you know, two Russian ships, and this ship is actually refueling us right in the middle of the ice. Yeah. Now. If, Again, if I show this picture to someone else, they say that they would say that it's an accident. You know, somebody just you know sort of uh, tried to do parking, but it hit the other ship. But that's not the case. They, we were doing the mid ice refueling. Yeah, this is an image from the drone. So this is uh, right after the sun came out. Uh, I think in in March 2020. Yeah. So just to give you like an overview of what we do. Uh, so that's why I just showed the slides. Now, uh, so even even though this was my sort of like semi longest expedition in both Arctic and the Antarctic, but next year I'll be a station leader at the British Antarctic Survey uh, in Rothera in the in the West Antarctic, and I'll be there for like one year. Uh, I'll be living in Antarctica for one year, uh, managing the station. So, so that's that was my dream. It took like twelve long years for me to reach the stage, but I, but I guess you know to get the best things in your life you have to wait and try. So that's uh, that's that's from that's from my side. Uh, I guess uh, I, I guess Michelle has like some uh, questions to ask, and um, I, I I'm uh, so it yeah I have time to answer a lot of questions. And people can ask me anything because I expect people to ask me a lot of questions. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so first of all, the pictures were really good. They were so clear, and it's a privilege to go through that gallery. Uh, so we have a lot of questions uh, coming up. So everybody, the forum is open. You can easily post your questions on the chat, and sir is here to address whatever you want to talk about. So. The first question that we got was, uh, from where do your does your research station get its energy? Uh, good question. So, so there are there are three ways we do expedition. So the first the first way is through our research station. So, in the Arctic and in the Antarctic uh, countries, they have their own research stations, like high Arctic research stations. So they are like you know buildings. They are they are they are they are like you know like relatively like uh, small to big big buildings, powered through like solar energy and through diesel fuel. So uh, so both ways. So during during uh, darkness, uh, they use diesel energy, diesel fuel. But during when it is like you know six months sunlight, they use solar power. So it's it's not completely sustainable, but that's how they run the station. 
Now, this is uh, for a research station. When we are on the ship, the ship is powered by ship's power, that is Arctic diesel. So, again, that's also not sustainable. When we are, uh, so the third way is we, we are deployed, we get deployed. So, we are like thrown out from an aeroplane uh, into the ice and we live on the ice for like many weeks in a tent. Uh, over there, there, are, there is no source of power. So either we live in complete darkness for like uh, all these weeks or uh, in complete sunlight. When it, is sunlight, when it is sunny, it's not a problem. You know, the, the only problem is you won't be able to sleep because it's 24 hour sunlight. But when it is dark, the only source of power, what we have is like a torchlight. That's it. Okay. Um, so that is clear. Uh, so we have a question from uh, Miss Nina Varkis. She's asking how many countries were involved in the 2019 expedition and uh, are there any findings? Are they kept secret or are, is this research shared forward? Yes. So 20 nations participated in this mosaic expedition. 300 people were actually on board uh, for this expedition, not at one time. So the expedition was divided into like five legs, leg ones, legs one to five. And every leg had like 40 people, 40 to 50 people on the ship. So I was on leg two uh, during polar darkness. But after my leg, others, you know, came in to like, you know, uh, to, to, to replace me. Now, uh, when, it, when it comes to like what we found, okay, there are, there are a few things what I can say like as like snippets, like takeaway stuff. So what we saw during that one year in the Arctic close to North Pole was there is a lot of uh, winter storms like uh, affecting the Arctic, like hitting the Arctic. And these, wind, these storms are not cold also. They are like really warm coming from the Southern latitude from the Europe. And it also brought in a lot of dust and carbon uh, from wildfires, from biomass burning, and also from industrial pollution. So we were, the, 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 the instruments on the ship were able to actually measure like a lot of aerosols and also like uh, greenhouse gases, uh, like, you know, traveling across the Arctic into, into our research area. So that's something which we noticed like a lot. So we had close to like 60 plus storms during that course of one year. Where the ice broke up and when the ice breaks up, uh, it's very difficult to, to refreeze from the ocean because the ocean is already warm. So it has to lose a lot of heat. It's just like, you know, you put hot water inside your freezer. It takes a lot of time to, to, to freeze up, right? So you, you think, so that's the analogy. Now, uh, is this research available to the public? Not yet. So the research will be, the, the, the research means the data will be made free to the public starting Jan 1st, 2023. So till then, the data is available only to the consortium, uh, that is, you know, people like us, where we do the first set of publications. The publications are already starting to come out, like the main publications, but everyone sitting in this group uh, and people across the globe can access the data for free starting Jan 1st, 2023. That's the consortium rule. Uh, I think Shakuntala ma'am has a question. She's raised her hand. Ma'am, you're on mute. Sorry. Vishnu, thank you for that excellent uh, presentation and beautiful pictures. And uh, to know the impact that uh, is happening globally and um, the, the research also tells us that small islands will disappear with the rise of the ocean if the ice keeps melting. My question to you is, we are a woman's group, you know, very, very lay people. What can, what can be our little efforts in the direction of preserving the uh, environment and ensuring that ice, you are saying that it can't come back, but at least we can sustain it, you know, it can't go back to where it was, but we can, you know, to, towards sustainability. So what would be some practical um, the ways of doing that? You, um, you lived in Kerala all your life, as I heard you, there are many, many people from Kerala in this forum. And um, so please tell us what can we do? Yeah, uh, uh, good question. So, uh, so uh, I have two answers to it. So the first answer is, you know, 
when we the easiest way is you know when we when we uh, when we make our food right when we when we make our food whether it is like man or woman you know i also cook so uh, when when we do our cooking what we do is we don't segregate the waste right what we do is we 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 put the plastic we put the paper and we also put the biodegradable stuff all into like one box and this just throw it for you know in in kerala in trivandrum it's the trivandrum corporation you know they come and pick it up right and they dump everything into like one big dump yard and they burn it that's the that, that's so that's that's the first thing what we could actually like you know change so already there are like a lot of changes where like local self government and they are they, they are, you know uh, driven by women what they do is i mean in kerala it's called as kudumbasri where it's it's completely driven by women where they come in uh, to like to 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 households and they collect these biodegradable waste like compost and they and they they recycle it for like you know make, making like you know biodegradable fertilizers for just for example and at least i don't know about all the states but in some states they have made it like mandatory uh, made it uh, mandatory to make sure that the waste the waste which we throw they needs they need to be segregated so that it's easier uh, for uh, for the governments to make policies and to uh, to make policies to curb the the emissions so that's from the start now the second way is uh what we can do is one of the things uh, which we still lack in india is a ba- very basic education when it comes to like teaching students like what environment is and why we need to protect the environment right it's it has to st- it, it shouldn't it shouldn't start from like B- bsc environmental science it shouldn't work like that because uh now i i don't know you know nowadays you know people jump into like degree uh, degree programs not because you know they are passionate about it that uh, it's just because you know her his or her neighbor is doing the same thing right so that shouldn't happen i did the same during my bachelor's because i didn't do my btech because i was passionate i did it because my neighbor was an engineer uh so the 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 education programs should actually start from the from, from school like not just in textbooks but people should, but but schools should take out students out in the environment and show them that this is this is our nature this is degrading we should protect it right it's as simple as that it's not a big, it's not like a it's not like a, it's not like a big thing you don't need like heavy funds for schools to do this this is just basic education and this is irrespective of you know men or women everybody has to do it right so that's that's what My, my 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 you know my two basic advices there thank are like a lot of ways to do it but i don't want to like you know expand okay thank you thank you vishnu okay so uh, we have another question uh, so here there's a question uh, they're asking what do you eat for food uh yeah a yeah, good question so very 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 basic uh when i say basic like very basic without salt and pepper so leave leave coriander powder you leave chili powder leave turmeric leave garam masala leave all that it's very basic even without salt and pepper we we don't even use salt and pepper because if if i get sick right in the middle of nowhere right in the middle of the ocean there is nobody to help so we have to keep ourselves uh, fit um, <coughs> yeah and we have to make sure that our digestion works properly and what do i eat we can't eat everything there is a strict diet for us so most of the food is like frozen food so there is uh, there is nothing like uh, okay you can you know make like fresh chicken or anything you know so uh, we are recommended we are strictly recommended to have uh, uh broccoli then uh, what do you call it spinach spinach yeah spinach yeah so uh, palak right palak i think yeah and then from uh, meat from meat you, we we have chicken and turkey 
and uh, as a beverage we can have a, everything from warm water to like uh, they don't recommend coffee but they recommend like you know hot tea and also when we go on like you know big uh, i mean uh, within expeditions we do hike for like kilometers into the ice so during those days uh, we are recommended to have vodka to keep ourselves warm so i'm i'm not a i mean i shouldn't say this in a public forum like this but but still you know that's that's our uh, that's that's our mode of living i'm not an alcoholic but i have to so okay thank you for sharing that um so the next question is from uh, miss rebecca and she's asking uh, in case there is a medical emergency or a condition uh, what measures do you take how do you prepare for it and what happens next uh, okay so uh, so the medical condition can happen in three ways so the first way is uh, you you get these accidents where you break a leg or something so if you are working out of a ship the ship will have like a surgeon and with basic medical facilities like an x-ray machine etc etc along with like two nurses if you are out working on the ice from a tent no nothing you just have the, like the basic first aid if you work from a research station it's 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 better because it's they have like a surgery room and everything now the second the, the 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 second way of getting an accident is and the most common is the frostbite because of like severe cold and i am a sufferer in that i so out of my 10 fingers three of them they are like vegetable so it doesn't work so two of my two thumbs they are done they are dead and my ring finger is also dead and one of my fingers in my feet is also my my, my leg is also dead so that happened you know over the years and i was not careful uh, back then now i am careful but you know at least you know uh, so so that's i didn't have to like amputate my fingers it was like second degree degree, degree frostbite but the extreme case is when uh, the your your fingers or your uh, not the internal organs the external parts you know they 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 get gangrenous they turn blue and then you will have to amputate and we are t- trained to amputate so i have amputated like few of uh, fingers from others so I, sometimes i have i also became like surgeon so it's it's sad but we have to do it to avoid infections and the most extreme case is death it doesn't happen often but uh, i had i have had like a dreadful experience of like you know seeing one of my friends you know dying right in front of me like falling in falling through the ice into the ocean and we could never recover his body so that's that's the worst okay um so that is scary to hear but also very interesting uh so okay so the next question next question is uh, from ms parviz and um, she's asking what is the take back for the sustaining for sustaining the environment from your research what's the take back uh, so uh, like, like i said in in my introduction so what we what we find from my research specifically is the the sea ice what we study it's thinning uh, it, it used to be like 4 to 5 meters thick now because it's very difficult for the ice to produce under like warm ocean conditions the ice is thinning like a lot so nowadays the ice has become thin close to like thinner close to like 1 to 1.5 meters so from a climate point of view when you have like thin sea ice uh, it affects the 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 propagation of sunlight through the uh, through the ice into the ocean where the phytoplanktons and the small algae uh, they live so they need light to bloom so when you have like less light it's it becomes like very difficult so that's that's one that's one implication the second implication is when you don't have ice it it becomes difficult for polar bears and arctic seals to uh, to to migrate from one place to another and then and and they get disoriented when you don't have ice and it and uh, just like what happens between tigers 
when when two tigers come to their same territory they start fighting so say, similar to that uh, this happens with polar bears also for example for arctic seals they need ice and snow to to protect their cubs not cubs kids kids cubs yeah kids or cubs uh, so they need they need uh, ice and snow so when there is no snow or ice it becomes difficult for them now from a, from a big large scale climate standpoint when there is no ice it it increases the ocean temperatures and it affects uh, our you know uh, it affects india to be to be like honest like not directly but indirectly because there are other there are other reasons also why our like our oceans are warming not just the arctic sea ice or the antarctic sea ice it, I, i guess that that's what parvis ma'am you know she wanted to know i guess yes i think that answers uh, the question so uh, yashika has uh, a question for you yashika please yeah thank you thank you michelle so i can see a lot of uh, hand raise in the uh, images also so uh, before that i would just continue from the chat box uh, so there's a question regarding how many people can maximum stay together in terms of resource replenishment uh uh yeah okay so most of uh, most of our expeditions uh, we have only like 3 to 4 people at a time we don't go alone uh because uh, that's a suicide uh but our max if you i mean if you go to a station or on the ice like camping on a tent the max is like 3 people if you go in a ship it can go up to like 30 to 40 because ship is very expensive to to lease uh it can cost you like you know millions of dollars so uh, then then you have like a bigger team so big big expeditions so this uh, this mosaic expedition what i just showed the overall cost of that expedition was close to like in indian rupee it was close to like 2300 2, crores for one year and out of the 2300 2, crores close to like 1600 2, crores was just for the arctic fuel that's it okay. there ends the discussion uh, which means we are releasing a lot of emissions but at the same time we are spending a lot of money uh, to to transport a lot of people doing all this research so it's a competing effect and uh, not competing contradictory effect yeah so i would uh, say i mean uh, mo- most of my expeditions they are like you know three to four people only and after a while we hate each other in continuation of this question there was a uh, questions regarding how long can uh, the researchers live there or spend time there like is are there any restricted period regarding the medical restrictions or because of the psychological issue yeah psychology is a psychology is a big thing i i i uh, you know my uh, okay so i'll keep it decent here so by the time i come back uh, i lose all my brain so i don't so one of the things what i love during my expeditions is the silence so i love silence i am not a people i am a people person but i don't like a lot of people like blah, 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 blah. i don't do i don't like that i don't like those uh, blabbering always that's that's an evolution in me because uh, i was not like that i became like that so from silence into human civilization with a lot of people around it drives me nuts so at least for 2 to 3 weeks i go to a counselor to to fix my brain so this i i do that every every time i still do it the second psychological aspect is uh, the darkness and the sunlight from sun from darkness for like many months into sunlight it it's a uh, your biological clock you know it becomes like very awkward it doesn't work properly and from sunlight from 24 hour sunlight into like sunlight plus darkness it's a different uh, mind game so we go through all these uh, psychological challenges we still do and there is no 
there is no solution to it even though uh, you have like a lot of experience doing field work but there is no solution to it at the end of the day you know we are all human beings having a uh, having a body and a soul so you have to go through these things or else you are not a human being yeah thank you uh, so next question is a really interesting one miss suja has asked that if a polar bear attacks the wires and all so is there any uh, like are we allowed like are you guys allowed to take an action against it like are you allowed to kill it or uh, no. and no, what's your can, take yeah. on killing those animals uh, okay so uh, so i'll tell you what the practical Uh, way to do it and i'll tell you what my take is the practical way is if it excuse me if it destroys an instrument the first thing what we do is just like we so we 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 do the fireworks and we scare them off this is what we do first if they become even more aggressive and comes towards us uh, as this happens especially when we are living on a tent so when we have food you know when we have food the polar bear you know it can smell and it can come to us now if it becomes more aggressive what we do is we have short guns with us but not with the live ammunition but with bear bangers it's like rubber bullets now a polar bear has close to like you know at least like 5 to 10 cm of like thick skin so it gets hurt but it doesn't it, it won't die now if it let's say if it attacks us like when it when it stands on its four four feet it, it, when it when it stands on how do you say that i don't know how you how you say it. when you when it stands on two feet it's like 12 feet high it's 12 feet tall it's it's that big and very heavy so when they attack us if they attack us what happens is uh, then we are left with nothing then we have to put him down Uh, but that's not advisable because we have to report it the moment you report these incidents to the government and to wwf they will eat your head because they what they would think is oh vishnu in a shot of polar bear but they won't think that okay we are living in a hostile environment and when somebody comes to us and and when a polar bear attacks us you know it's it we have to save our life right you know i am i am selfish enough to save my life i don't want to save a polar bear and in you know, a me committing suicide i won't do that so that's my take these i mean uh, i mean my next take is all these you know uh, big animal protection forums and this big wwf you know they they do all these you know they, they do all these uh, policy frameworks and everything but i uh, but i i don't completely believe in that because i have my reasons i have seen stuff which i don't want to discuss here in a public forum but yeah so that's my personality if it affects my life if it if it endangers my life i'll take actions thank you uh, miss sangeeta you have a question ma'am please <laughs> Ms. Ankita, can you ask your question, please? Oh, okay, she's not here. Uh, Michelle, please go ahead with the next question. Michelle, Kalpana has posted a question. Please uh, uh, look at that. Uh. uh dr vishnu uh, actually kalpana ma'am has asked a question for you so i would just like to read it out here uh she has asked can you please discuss what we as an ngo with international standing uh, what can we do for environmental protection for you uh uh yeah yeah okay so yeah going back to my previous answer about what we can do from a grassroots level one of the things what ywca can actually do is to 
to do like like serious workshops you know focusing uh, focusing on students and youth i mean this is like a international youth day right but uh, focusing on students and youth and educating them the importance of uh, environment so that's the first thing to do i i don't believe in a, i don't believe in a system where okay okay we okay let's let's make like a let's make like an event where we plant like 100 trees no that doesn't work that's that's good for like pr but that doesn't work from a practical standpoint planting trees it's good for from an afforestation side but it's still not solving it, it it's not so it's just like a temporary it's just like a temporary short term solution but i think you know it has to start from education so you have to educate the more you educate then you don't need to plant trees people will people will transform that's what i think education has to improve the basic education i mean i you know everybody learns english english 1 and english 2 study in listening to stories listening to uh, talking about how they can write good essays you know grammar vocabulary blah, 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 everything but they don't they, but why can't we include like environment as an education yeah because that's so, that's 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 needed that's what i think yeah i think our education system needs to rewire itself to the need of today's society and uh, environment which is yeah. not happening yeah so if we can make some recommendation as an organization to the education department and uh, school education not uh, college education basic education must instill this kind of sense of awareness and sense of responsibility for keeping your environment clean and encourage green yeah exactly so 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 it, it has to start from the grassroots level yeah. so that's why that's why i mentioned education perhaps from a wide open space who is the project to start with okay uh, do we have any more questions uh, we have uh 10 more minutes to take the questions so if you want to ask any more questions please drop yeah, it yeah may i speak uh, yes please ms vargas yes uh vishnu nandan thank you so much it's so wonderful to meet such a human being like you we are so proud of you sir thank is you. it allowed to take the family for a short time no <laughs> are no. they allowed you all to accompany no. No, oh, okay. no, 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 no. Uh, the 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 main reason is not because you know I don't want to take my family. It's just because they don't allow you. Uh -huh. And it's second reason is, and second reason is uh, the environment is like way too hostile. Uh, uh, okay. Without uh, a without without proper uh, training and mindset, right. it's it's, it's, it's impossible. To do it. So it's like and, going to the moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like going to the moon, uh -huh. and may not come back. <laughs> no yeah, sir you will always be with us <laughs> are yeah, there I'm... any indians with you sir no i am the only indian oh wow thank you this is our 75th uh, independent day <laughs> gift <laughs> okay can the ywc take some recommendation from yeah. this seminar shakuntala let's have some some at least something not that it might yeah. bear any fruit in today's today's Absolutely. government but whatever Absolutely. we can do yeah i think about one i just i saying two things and i'm open for dialogue and discussion on one one of the things is that in our own local wdc our projects our schools wherever we are running whatever we are doing there to have you know separate crash uh, which started i think about 12 years Years ago, uh, and it has somewhere fallen apart. So revive that is one. Second thing is that we need to uh, yeah, perhaps have a signature campaign and uh, the uh, white paper to the seven sisters groups to say that we need to sustain our uh, planet. And for that, uh, we are proposing an awareness sessions which need to start be inclusive as 
right from the primary level right from the primary level to go up to at least class 10 which is compulsory education by the government so if this could be uh, included in the syllabus um, and um, that is the we can make a recommendation and get a signature campaign make a recommendation to the ncert which writes the board syllabus uh, in, in uh, at a national level and then for it to be uh, you know uh, for it to flow down I think those will be the two very uh, important working, uh, you know, workable aspects to influence a very, very large population. And the third is also that we have from the worldwide WCA, all those who are seniors are, that we have to reach 100 million young people by our programs and interaction. And if 100 million people, uh, young people in our country are influenced by this uh, the, you know, pursuits that we are making in terms of protecting, protecting our world and our environment, then that would be perhaps a little bent in the, in the whole system because we are seeing what COVID-19 has done. It's a small world. Everybody gets affected. Additionally, it was nice to know that you were the only people in, uh, on the planet that were not affected by the COVID. The rest of us, our world has collapsed, uh, are devastated, so many things have happened. Oh, I also, I, I also, I also got COVID after I came back. So oh, after I'm, you came back, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, David. Dr. Anything David, else? Dr. Anybody else with any other yes. recommendation? Yes. Uh, recommendation that we can make? Yes, please. Yes, yes. I think you should also you should influence all the corporations that they should not burn the garbage. Everywhere you see garbage fires, which is very bad for the environment. It pollutes the environment and causes uh, warming also. Um, yeah. See, see uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the umbrella is so, the canvas is so big. The canvas is so huge. CSR, we can push this here at the CSR level, wherever it is happening. You know, at the Ministry of Education and Women and Child Welfare, we can push these initiatives in, the, in those where we have sitting in Delhi, where we have the power of influence. So the collectively get petitions signed from all over the country. And uh, I urge all of you who are here to please be active enough to respond to the yeah, petitions, mails, etc. that we are or the office sends out, that we are collectively on the same page. And the more that we are, the more the power of influence we have. Uh, thank you, Dr. David. One, one, one more question. Ms. Parvis, one, just come to you. Yeah. Just come to you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. We have uh, two more questions. So one more question to uh, Ms. Rebecca. She has raised her hand. After that, we'll come to Ms. Purvis for the last question and we'll wind up the session, please. So over to you, Rebecca, if you do want to ask a question. Yeah. Well, thank you so much there for um, giving me an opportunity to ask a question. Um, thank you, Dr. Wishnu. I think the session was extremely informative and thank you for the huge sacrifice to humanity, science and everything else that you have done. My question to you is, um, I, I know it's just a question of curiosity, but how do you stay in touch with, you know, um, loved ones and, you know, family members and things like that during these expeditions? Because I do understand that this has a huge mental impact. And for someone as um, who's such an influenza in the um, in the area of, you know, in, in environmental studies, um, I'm, I'm just curious to know how you actually stay in touch with, um, you know, members of your family for your own sanity. Uh, sometimes I cannot, sometimes I can. Uh, we, we do have satellite phones because the phone networks, they, they don't work. So we do have satellite phones. So if in case of an emergency, I can, I can contact them. They cannot contact me, which is, which is a drawback. So yeah, apart from that, there is no other way. So that's, that's a sacrifice. But I guess, you know, people who know me, they're okay with it. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, okay, Ms. so Paris? is it like a one-way yeah. contact? Sorry. So you choose where you can contact them, but they can't actually contact you? Yeah, they can't contact me. Because oh, okay. the satellite Thank phone, you. they don't have a phone number. So it comes as like a 150-digit phone <laughs> number in your phone. So. 
<laughs> that's the problem right uh, over to ms parvis for the last question and we can definitely share dr vishnu's uh, social media handles and uh, dr vishnu we would request you if you could share any mode of communication so that our members can keep on asking their questions and they can, can consult you for any directions or guidance in this matter yeah, yeah so, so i really can, I can give, that I, I can i can give my email and my phone number i will put it in the chat Yes, thank you. Oh, uh, Miss Purvis, your love, your question. Please. Thank you, uh, thank you, dear. I'd like to know how these expeditions are financed. Oh, they are all financed by the government. So, uh, all my expeditions are financed financed by government of Canada. Uh, so, including my travel, my stay on ice, my food, my salary, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. because it's a very expensive it's 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 very expensive to fund uh, an expedition like i said the, the last expedition was close to like 20 300 crores uh, sometimes it can go i mean it, it that's like the extreme but normally it goes between like 200 to like 500 crores for like one expedition okay it's multinationally funded by yes. various countries yes okay. so so canada Uh, has like strong research collaboration in this field with nordic countries uh, and also with us thank you over to you michel good to so see much. you rebecca Uh, dear members, uh, I think Vishnu has shared the mail ID. Doctor Vishnu's phone number is also there, so you can please note down note down the contact details, and you can definitely contact him. Of course, with his permission for any matter regarding to whatever in his field or whatever he is doing. Yeah, over to you, Michelle. Thank you, sir, for uh, sharing with us your experience. Uh, it was very interesting. We got to know a lot about various things we've never thought of, maybe. And uh, so, the major takeaways for me from this session was, uh, sir, um, emphasized on how we need to work at the grassroots. We need to start from the bottom, from schools and uh, children, educate them, make them aware. that uh, about our environment and how it is necessary to engage them with the environment not only through books but also through experiential learning through uh, making them aware of their surroundings uh, one more takeaway is uh, how it is important to manage our waste one of the participants also they mentioned how uh, there is garbage that is being burned around uh, the country around the world in fact and how it is affecting us uh, majorly not only us our biodiversity our uh, animals and how it is uh, the need of the art to actually start working on it because we have already uh, gone very far and uh, the only way is to start acting on it through individual actions so uh, right now i would uh, like to invite dia Uh, to give the word of thanks over to you uh, thank you michel thank you uh, dr vishnu this has been an incredible session for all of us i could see that we had around 86 participants just here to listen to dr vishnu and his amazing adventure so i actually got in touch with dr vishnu in a form in, in a forum where he was speaking and when he was introducing himself i just did a research and would and i was able to find that he was the only indian in the mosaic research team uh, you know to go in the polls and i was super excited because we had the international youth day coming and the entire youth and the program department we were planning for you know a whole program to be done so immediately we tried to reach out to him and his response was amazing he was so willing to be part of our uh, session today and even though i did give him a heads up that you know it is in the evening we have to uh, you know adjust with the time zone so evening we're not very sure if many would be there but he responded saying that even if it is like 2 or 3 i would gladly be there to just show you the pictures and to show you how beautiful the environment is so that you get an inspiration to preserve it 
and the way he had showed the pictures of whatever he's doing we know that the genuine love for what he's doing and you know to preserve nature it is beautiful it was beautiful so on behalf of the ywc family everyone gathered here dr vishnu we thank you so much for your time you have taken it from your very busy schedule you're preparing to go to the antarctica for a year so we thank you so much for being with us here today on an important day of international youth day 2021 Uh, our theme for this year was youth for sustainability and we have been reaching out to local associations calling out to the youth to be very active in the terms of preserving the eco ecology eco uh, economic eco ecosystem so sorry preserving the ecosystem and to promote policies like dr david has rightly said how we can involve more as an international ngo and rightly as kalpana ma'am has asked like what what is the role that we as ywcs can do so we have to focus more on reaching out to the grassroots level reaching out to the education system how we can create a lasting impact and like vishnu said you know we can't take it back to what it was only thing is that we can slow down the process so that was really sad to hear but yes we will definitely try our best we have taken in all the recommendations uh, which you know all the members you have discussed we have noted down and we'll definitely take it up and the youth is more than ever ready to take it up forward so uh, my heartfelt thanks to the youth team who have worked behind in coordinating the session a big thank you to dr david um, national president our national general secretary kalpana kalpana ma'am who have given us the full freedom and said that please you take it ahead this is your baby you are free to do and plan and arrange this whole day and it has been an enlightening session for us in the morning we had a screen a movie screening where we discussed about it and the whole takeaway from the morning session was also to be considerate to the ecosystem considerate to the animal considerate to the planet as a whole so thank you so much for your constant support from the vice presidents and to the national board as well and a special thank you to all the members despite the time we still have almost 60 participants here so glad to see that you have all come here to support us in this initiative so a big thank you to all and a special thank you to all my team from the ywc office the youth team specially yashika michelle amanda pooja thank you so much uh, kalpana ma'am Do you have any uh, closing remarks? Uh, you are on mute, please. A very big thank you to Dr. Vishnu for taking your time, and I know it's the time lag is there. It's uh, morning for you and evening for us, but uh, we would like to remain connected with you. And my thank you to my young team. uh for taking us up today and this was a very short notice for all of them to start again a thank you to all the ywca members especially the national president who has joined us and all the board members for being with us good night good night thank you very much vishnu once again yeah thanks thank you rebecca good to see you good to see your faces are they and reconnecting thank you thank you very much Bye. Bye. Thank you so God much, everybody. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.